because I'm nervous. Yes! You know, when I first started making my first math video, I was kind of nervous. Oh, no. I'm going to be like doing math videos, and the kids are going to be watching, and, you know, I was like, I got a little nervous, and so I started changing my voice. Yes. <laughs> anyway, but it is me, it is I, Mr. Wara, and we are doing lesson 3.2. Woohoo! We're cruising through chapter three now. Getting into a lot of stuff with multiplication now. Yeah. Cool. I like, I love math. Well, you know I love math. I, I can't say it enough. I mean, math is just... Numbers don't lie. I say that a lot. Numbers just don't lie. That's what I like. Anyway, today we're going to be doing something called estimate products. Okay? So we're going to be estimating products. Two words seem kind of confusing. But this lesson has this essential question and this is going to help us it's going to give us the purpose that we need to like what are we learning mr wara and here you can see the essential question that purpose is about what strategies you can use to estimate products now of course we've talked about estimating giving ourselves kind of a like an about answer we sometimes say you know it's just a, a educated guests that there's about so many people and maybe at a party and it comes in handy sometimes when we want to understand number concept by just estimating and of course the product you know an answer to a multiplication problem that's right that's exactly what that is good job mr wara okay wow i remember the lessons that i've been teaching pretty rare okay but first you know what we got to do right yeah unlock the problem that's right my friends because it's real world baby real world real world Ooh, i love that okay now, it says the Smith family opens the door of their refrigerator 32 times in one day. Okay, that seems like a lot. There are 31 days in May. About how many times is it opened in May? Ooh, okay. You know, kind of a sketchy little problem. Now, a couple things that stand out. First of all, here, like it tells us, it says, underline any information you will need. Okay, well, here it says the Smith family opens the door of their refrigerator 32 times in one day. Okay, that seems really important to me. It does. 32 times in one day. Well, now it says there are 31 days in May. That would be important to know. Absolutely. Going to use that information. So that's what we're going to be using. Now it says about how many times. And that about is letting us know that we are going to be estimating. Which is what the learning target or the essential question is of this lesson that we're going to estimate about how many times it is opened in May. Well, this is one way we can use rounding and mental math. Rounding and mental math, suggesting that these two things are a little bit different. Let's take a look what the rounding is. That's our estimating, right? It says here we can round each factor. So here we have 32 times 31, okay? If we were to try to do this in our head, eh, it'd be kind of hard. But what we could do is we could just round each factor to 30, okay? And hence, we have our 30 times 30. Now we go to step two. It says, use mental math. Well, we know the basic fact is 3 times 3. It equals 9. Okay, that's pretty simple. So if we're doing 30 times 30 and we can look at that basic fact, that's pretty important. Because then that way, we can see the problem in a simpler form. Now when we put our zeros on, it makes it a little bit easier because now we have 9. And then, of course, we have 1 power of 10 two powers of 10. You guys some, sometimes like to say, Mr. Wara, it's just because there's two zeros. I do like saying that too. And I think that's a good thing that you recognize that there are two zeros there and there's two zeros in the product. However, it's important to, to understand what that means. And that's why I always say, like I think of it as a power of 10 because we have 30 instead of three. So the Smith family opens the refrigerator door about 900 times during the month of May. <laughs> Yeah, it's like a lot of times, huh? Anyway, let's look at number one here. It says, on average, refrigerator doors open 38 times each day. Okay, that's the average amount. Okay, about how many fewer times in May is the Smith family's refrigerator door opened than the average refrigerator door? And of course, it says show your work. Okay, well, I'm looking at this problem I'm thinking, all right, the key word here in the problem was that about how many, about how many fewer times. That suggests that somewhere along the line here, I need to subtract. So this is going to be fewer. Well, 38, and we were using the number about 30 days in a month. It was like 31. But because we're looking for about, we're going to go ahead and round these numbers. Well, if it's, if the refrigerator door here on average is being opened 38 times, I'm just going to round that number to 40 and just multiply that by the number of days in May, which in the problem was 31, but again, we're looking for an about answer, so I'm gonna go ahead and round that to 30. Makes it really close to our actual number, 
because now I can just do the simple fact here of 4 times 3, which is 12, and then with the two powers of 10, my two zeros, I end up with 1,200. Now that's how many times it's opened on average. But the information that we had from above was, was 900. When we did that number was, remember the 30 times the 30, we did like a rounding, and that was like 900. We want to find out how many fewer times in May. Well, then I could take my 1,200 then, and I could subtract my 900, giving me 300. So I would say that a reasonable answer then would be 300 times less. So I would say then that the Smith's family's refrigerator door is opened about 300 fewer times than the average refrigerator door. So let me write those words down. Cool, there you go. Okay, I think it's time for page master Ooh, yeah coming to page two now it says here all 24 light bulbs in the park family's home are cfl light bulbs they must be really important light bulbs i'm not quite sure what cfl are are they like led they look like it looks like an led light bulb those are pretty cool light bulbs they last longer they're more efficient they don't use as much power anyway each cfl light bulb uses 28 watts to produce light. Again, it says about how many, and this I'm just going to underline this right now. About how many watts will the light bulb use when turned on all at the same time? Okay, so I'm definitely looking for an estimate. And this just is another way that we can do a problem. What we were focusing on about estimating products. Here it says use mental math and compatible numbers. Okay, now compatible numbers, they say, are numbers that are easy to compute mentally. Okay, keep, think to yourself, so estimating or rounding is a little bit different than compatible numbers. We might want to think that they're the same, but they're really not. Rounding really has to do with coming up with that, that estimated quantity that is about where compatible numbers are actually numbers that you can do in your head. So we'll take a look at this. Here it says estimate 24 times 28. Now it's a step one, use compatible numbers. Okay, so we're going to estimate those two numbers, and it says use compatible numbers. So now it shows us that, well, a compatible number for 24 would be 25, and then a compatible number for 28 is, is 30. And it says, think, 25 times 3 equals 75. Aha, uh -huh. so now I understand why 25 is a compatible number, because 25 times 3, it's like a quarter, it's very easy to compute mentally. But if we were to estimate these numbers, we might have wanted to do 20, right? and times 30, but they didn't. They use a compatible number. Why is that important? Well, now look what happens in step two. We can use mental math because now that we know that 25 times three is equal to 75, well, 25 times 30, which is what our problem states now, is just simply 750, okay? Does that kind of make sense? We got that power of 10 that was added on, so we're really, in a sense, using simple facts. And for a lot of us, 25 times three is a simple fact, some of you may still be kind of learning some of those numbers. There's just certain numbers we consider to be compatible because they meet like certain benchmark numbers. Like, our, oh, like when you were in second grade and making numbers that were a 10, okay? Compatible numbers, 6 plus 4, 3 plus 7. We always think of these numbers as being compatible. They're compatible because all these numbers will make a 10. So I'm trying to point that out. That's compatible numbers if you were a second grader. But now that you're in fourth grade, now we're looking at compatible numbers, you know, through multiplication and of course looking at other patterns. Cool. Well, let's look at the next section. Now it says try this. Cool. Estimate 26 times 79. Well, it says round to the nearest 10. So 26 rounded to the nearest 10, we would just say would be 30. And then 79, we would just say is 80, $80 that is. Which we know if we look at our simple facts at three times eight, right, is 24. We have two powers of 10 there. So now we have 2,000, because we are talking about money, $2,400. I wouldn't mind a little bit of extra cash. <laughs> and now it's just compatible numbers. So how is this different? Well, now look what they did. Rather than rounding the 26 to the 30, they rounded to 25, because 25 is a great kind of like benchmark number. And how is this going to be compatible with 80? Well, it says, think 25 times 4 equals 100. To help find 25 times 8, Aha, uh -huh, I see. So if 25 times 4 is 100, then when 25 times 8 then, it's like double that. So wouldn't that just be 200? And that would be like $200. Okay, I think I'm getting that. It's just double. It's almost like saying there's four quarters in $1, so there's eight quarters in $2. Okay, that makes total sense to me. 
Now it says, so 26 times $79 is about, well, oh, I forgot my powers of 10 here. That was just 200. So I ha still have another power of 10 here, okay, to add on because that we did that with eight and 25. And so I didn't add on my zero. So that's 2000. So 26 times 79 is about $2,000. Oh, I didn't even put it over here. Uh, that one was about 2,400. Okay, that makes sense. I like it. Well, let's look at number two. It says explain why 2,400 and 2,000 are both reasonable estimates. Well, my thinking on this one here is, is that since both the estimated numbers that we used, the compatible numbers and the estimated numbers, since they were so close to the original number, the actual number of the problem, then both estimates would be reasonable. That's my, that would be my reasoning. Okay, it says, in what situation might you choose to find an estimate rather than an exact answer? Um, I, I think one situation where I might just use an estimate rather than an exact answer. Um, I'm in California here, so, you know, like in San Diego, the San Diego Padres, they, they play their games at Petco Park. There wouldn't be any possible way that you could count everyone at the park but you could come up with an estimated answer. In fact, I can tell you right now, an estimate of how many people attend like a average game is probably anywhere from 35,000 to 40,000. So that's a situation where I might choose to find the estimate rather than the exact answer because it would just be too difficult. So I'm gonna just use that as an example. Cool, finally we had a Sharon show. Woohoo! Now it says, get the math boards. Yes, get your math boards, my friends. Yeah, that's how I always do a circle around that. Whoa. Now it says to estimate the product of 62 and 28 by rounding, how would you round the factors? What would the estimated product be? Well, that's a great question. If I'm gonna estimate those two just by looking at them, 62 is really close to 60 and 28 is really close to 30. So I would round the factors to the nearest 10. So 62 times 28, I would say as an estimation would be 60 times 30, okay? What would the estimated product be? Well, my simple fact, six times three, 18. I have two powers of 10, my two zeros, which is 1,800. That's what I would come up with. Now, what's interesting about this here, and this is kind of a, an important point too. I didn't see that the lesson included this, but I'm gonna make this point. And that is, if we call an estimate too high or too low. I don't know if we talked about this in a previous video, because I've made so many now, and with fifth grade, it, I'm, you know, kind of losing my memory. But a high estimate and a low estimate. Now, this is what we could do is we could say that this estimate is probably pretty reasonable. 62 was the original factor. It got rounded down. It went down. The other number, 28, got rounded up. So this adds is probably pretty reasonable. But if we were to do something, it would make sense that our estimate would probably be high if we had rounded the 62, let's say to 70, and then maybe rounded the 28 to 30. Had we done that, you can see our estimate's gonna be much, much higher. We're gonna end up with, yeah, 2,100. Okay, that's a high estimate. It might still be considered reasonable because it's within the ballpark of the original numbers. But getting closer to the actual answer is sometimes good because it's gonna give us a little bit more accurate data. Whereas a low estimate, that would be just the opposite. So if we'd rounded, 62 got rounded down, but if we'd rounded 28 down to 20, well, what would happen? We'd end up with 60 times 20. You can see our estimate would be extremely low, 1,200. So when we look at all these numbers, it's kind of important to kind of keep that in mind so that when you're looking to see if your answer is reasonable, you can go back to the original problem and say, did I round up or did I kind of round down? Should my answer, my actual answer be more or should it be less than my estimated answer? Okay, that's just wanted to make that point, you know, putting stars around that one. Hang a star on that baby, woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Now my friends, you know, I know, you know, I know, we all know what everybody watching and participating know that the video has come to an end. <laughs> yes, I know, and I know you guys are just broken up. You're probably in tears. Get the tissue box because you're thinking, Mr. Wara, I just learned so much in this video, but it's over. But you know what? Another video is coming, my friends. So hang in there, cheer up, and, but in the meantime, live long and prosper. <laughs>